Hello everyone. Week 5 about ethics in international business. So let's start by learning objectives. Firstly, to understand the ethical issues we face within the sense of international business. Then, recognize what is an ethical dilemma. Identify the causes of unethical behavior by the managers. And also, explain how managers can incorporate eth ethical considerations into their decision-making processes. Let's start with a small video which will summarize what is ethics. As the video highlighted what the ethics are, let's see 
how we can increase our knowledge about it. So the term ethics refers to accepted principles, practices, what is right or what is wrong that in a way determine, govern a person's behavior within a society. So the members of profession or the actions of an organization is determined by these ethical considerations. Similarly, business ethics are the accepted principles of what is right or what is wrong, that how a business can act according to its customers or the employees. And by this, we have ethical strategy. It's a strategy or a course of action that doesn't violate these accepted principles. So by this strategy, the businesses, in a way, obey what are the ethical rules are. So let's look at issues within the international business. What are the ethical issues there? So we can observe many ethical considerations in the roots of business in the international wise. It is valid in the political system. We can see some ethical consideration and problems within the laws of the countries. Economic development also results ethical considerations. And the culture as well, because the culture worries, as we have in the previous week, within the different nations, there are different cultural considerations, different values and norms, so business can have ethical consideration when they operate internationally and they need to have different strategy within different nations. So in the international business setting, the most common ethical issue is involving employment practices, human rights, regulations, environmental regulations, and the corruption of multinational corporations, where in the upcoming slide we will see examples and the recent examples of these corruptions. And FIFA is one of them, where our ma president and many representatives had been resigned because of the corruption of the institution. So let's start by employment practices. When work conditions in the host nations are clearly inferior to those in multinational home nation. So which standards should be used? So in one hand, we have different rules and regulations of the home nation. In other hand, the host nation have different standards. What is the common point? Or which standards will be used by the main company? Those of the home nation or those of the host nation or something in between will be the best solution. Okay, on one hand, few suggest that pay and work conditions should be the same across every nation, every country. But how much divergence is acceptable? Because if we consider the working population and available workforce, the countries like China, Russia, Turkey has a massive population who are ready to work. But if you think the aging population countries, they don't have enough labor force, so production will be more costly for them because of less supply of labor. So how much divergence is acceptable for companies to pay less in some countries and more in another country? So if we have an example of a worker who worked 12 hours per day, extremely low pay, and in this case, there is a failure to protect workers against toxic chemicals may be a common in some developing nations. Does this mean that it is okay for the multinational to tolerate such working condition in its subsidiaries there? So would the company would accept it if these conditions are valid for their nation and accepted for the host country? So we have an example of Nike, Nike, which is uh, one of the famous shoe producers. So in the 90s, Nike found itself the center of a storm of protest when news reports revealed that working conditions at many of its subcontractors were very poor. We have example of employees who work with toxic materials six days a week in poor conditions for only 20 cents an hour, which is really low pay. 
Nike and its subcontractors were not breaking any laws. But this report and others like it raised the questions about ethics of using sweet shop labor to make what were essentially fashion accessories. So there was so many things illegal, but ethical wise, would you accept to pay these low salaries for the people who will produce the fashion accessories, which is have ha large demand worldwide. So as the night case demonstrates, a strong argument can be made that it is not okay for a multinational, for a big company, to tolerate poor working conditions in its foreign operations of those subcontractors. So let's come recent example of Apple iPhones. Everybody loves iPhone nowadays. They are one of the most selling smartphones of the world. But we have a news call. So nine workers there a Taiwan iPhone firm Foxconn. So let's see the case of the Apple and one of its subcontractors called Foxconn and what happened there. The journey began six weeks ago. Is this the entrance? When we arrived at the Foxconn gates filled with fascination and dread. Can you switch your mic on, please? There we go. It was an intriguing chance to witness the creation of the MacBook, oh the God. iPhone, and the iPad. Be, be the, the products that have fans sleeping on sidewalks in anticipation. <laughs> Rushing stores to buy another model of a gadget they probably already own. A devotion that turned Steve Jobs' garage startup into a company more valuable than Exxon. But while Apple is among the most beloved brands in the world, we came expecting to find the kind of horror stories that have demonized Foxconn. My name is Bill. Nice to meet you. With over a million employees, Apple's top supplier also works for Intel, Nintendo, Dell, and many others. But while they build 40% of the world's electronics, relatively few Americans knew their name until 2010 when nine Foxconn workers jumped to their deaths in a span of three months. The suicide nets are still a reminder of that horror. An explosion hit a Foxconn plant in Chengdu. And also fresh are the memories of two explosions last year, which killed four and injured 77. Did it take something that severe to make you rethink how you treated your workers here? I think absolutely. While Apple's been doing internal audits since 2006, the drumbeat of bad press, even allegations of child labor, led to a new era of openness. They finally revealed the names of most of their suppliers and joined the Fair Labor Association. Hello, I'm Bill Weir. Hi, I'm Julia. Hi. And we were there when the head of that watchdog group began an unprecedented investigation. How do you know they're not putting on a show for you if they know you're coming? I expect them to put on a show for us. That's normal. But uh, over the next couple of days, everything will surface. What goes through your mind when you do the same thing all day like this? While I met plenty of Foxconn workers willing to complain about long hours, low pay, and bad cafeteria food. You can be honest. We knew there was only so much an American with a camera could uncover here. So we anxiously awaited the results of that audit, including the anonymous survey of over 35,000 workers on, get this, iPads. Good to see you again, several weeks later, and just a few hours ago, the FLA posted their findings. As Americans understand the term, would you define Foxconn as a sweatshop? No, it's a very modern facility. Did you find any evidence of child labor? We did not. None? No child labor, no forced labor. So what are the most egregious violations being made there? Over time, over time. With an insatiable demand for new gadgets over here. And a massive hunger for steady work over there. Forced overtime is one of the most pervasive workers' rights problems in China. The law here says no one can work more than 49 hours a week. But no one actually obeys that law. Apple's official limit is 60 hours a week. So, six days a week, a Foxconn worker like Zhou Xiaoying will spend 10 hours a day filing Apple logos on the back of iPad cases 3,000 times a shift. What are you thinking about while you're working? A lot of times, I think about how tired I am, she tells me. 
They get two hour-long meal breaks when they march single file into a massive canteen and pay around 70 cents for a plate of meat and rice. If they eat fast enough, they can catch a few winks back at their spot on the line. So how does that happen for forced overtime? You, you think your shift is ending, the boss says, hold on, you're going to spend the night here? Question is, are people doing it voluntarily? Do they have a say? If they refuse overtime, are they going to face any kind of a recrimination? Everybody we talk to said they wish they made more money. I mean, that's a universal sentiment, I imagine. Right. But what about there? What, is it fair what these folks are making? They paid about 20% above the minimum wage, the legal minimum wage. We asked them if they feel that it's fair, and the majority said yes, they felt it was fair. But they also felt it wasn't enough to meet their basic needs. And here's the big headline. According to the FLA, Foxconn has agreed to sweeping changes. By July of next year, they promise that workers will only have to put in 49 hours a week while taking home the same amount of money as they do working 60 hours now. But in order to keep up with demand, that means Foxconn will have to build entire new lines and dorms and cafeterias and hire tens of thousands of new workers. Is Apple going to eat that cost? Is it going on to the customer? Social responsibility has a cost. Obviously, Foxconn will absorb some the buyers, because it's not just Apple, it's all of the other electronics companies as well who have to absorb some of this. And I think we need to be ready to, to put our money where our mouths are. Steve Jobs never visited his Chinese factories, but in a telling move, his replacement Tim Cook was at one yesterday. In a statement tonight, Apple said, we appreciate the work the FLA has done to assess conditions at Foxconn, and we fully support their recommendations. Our team has been working for years to educate workers, improve conditions, and make Apple's supply chain a model for the industry. The company boasts that they have educated over a million assembly line workers of their rights. But other watchdog groups think they can do much better. Uh, in 2006, it had a, did a similar investigation with a group called Verite and found you know, mass scale overtime violations and promised to clean it up and it's now been six years and nothing has happened. So you know, I hope that they're serious this time. How do you know they're going to do this? There are two reasons I know they'll do this. One is that we will monitor it and verify it and report it publicly. But secondly, they've made this commitment publicly now. And you guys and the consumers and the external stakeholders are all going to watch to see if they actually deliver. So if we carry on, and if you'd like to get more insights about it, I provide you with the link from BBC. And you can read about all what happened during the Foxconn case, and then what criticism Apple had after the, the subcontractors weren't provided enough condition for its workers, where there was committing to suicide, and there was learned helplessness, and they were in a depression. There was high absenteeism and high staff turnover because they weren't happy, but the products they used to produce was one of the best phones of the world. So it is ethical for Apple to pay low wages as a subcontractor and accept these phones. So, second aspect is human rights. So, question of human rights can arise within the sense of international business. Basic human rights are still not respected in many nations, which is unfortunate, but which is true. One of the most obvious historic examples used to be apartheid regime in South Africa. So, while the days of the apartheid, which didn't end until 1994, and you know the Nelson Mandela was the person who managed to break this regime and then later on become the president of the country. Okay, the apartheid system denied the basic political rights to the majority of non-white population of South Africa, mandating segregation between whites and non-whites, there was a divergence. So white used to be more superior than non-white during this regime. And they used to reserve certain occupation exclusively for whites. So management position, the ruling position, the police services used to be all white persons. And they used to prohibit blacks from being placed in a position where they are able to manage whites. So human rights 
wasn't there any example and uh, there was a break of human rights and this used to be called apartheid and it used to be valid until 1994. Another area is international pollution that we need to consider ethics as well. So ethical issues arise when in, in, uh, environmental regulation in the host nations are inferior to the home nation. So many developed nations have regulations about governing the emissions of pollutants, the dumping of the toxic materials, the use of toxic materials in the workplace, and so on. Those regulations are often lacking in developing nations, and according to critics, the results can be higher levels of pollution from the operation of multinationals than would be allowed at home. So as they don't have enough regulation in developing nations, multinationals might prefer to have a branch there for producing of toxic chemicals, and the pollution will affect the host nation rather than the home nation. We have also corruption. It is a problem since every society in history, and it continues to be one today. There always have been and always be corrupt government officials, according to resources we read. International business can and have gained economic advantages by making payment to those officials. So we have a link now to see what is the recent corruption rates. So if you look, the Volkswagen case is the one of the biggest scandals recently for 2015. So they used to fix emissions and they used to pass the test by this fixing. And later on, they had many criticism and they also lose profits because of the lose of loss of value of the shares. Then FIFA corruption scandal. So Sepp Blatter holds a press conference after the things have been arise. So all of the Platini and Blatter now re had to be resigned. They are not in the charge because of the corruption scandal. And if we carry on, Toshiba accounting scandal, and the Japanese culture is really good at this kind of at this criticism. So when they have some scandal going on, they immediately resign. We have real secret division as well. And you can read more about this from the link I provided. So if we carry on, there is also 10 largest global scandals recently. So we can also see that with the many sectors, the corruption is valid. So whether the country is from France, Japan, or Germany, we can face corruption, and the resources have extensive information about what is corrupted, the officials involved, and the countries which were in. And also we have recently the Panama Pies, which shows that there was a tax evasion with many officials and many famous people even famous football players we did. So we also lastly have ethical dilemmas. So what is right or what is wrong and how we can decide about it. So the ethical obligations of a multinational corporation towards employment conditions, human rights, corruption and pollution are not always clear, are not clear cut. So there may be no agreement about accepted principles. Managers often come from very real ethical dilemmas where the appropriate course of action is not clear. So which way they need to act, they are not sure. So dilemmas is the situation in which none of the available alternatives seem ethically acceptable if they do Option A is not acceptable when consideration of the B is that because there is home nation and host nation and which way you decide is a big question mark within the sense of international business. And this is ongoing debate and I believe it will be ongoing for many years. So references available, the leak references and the book. And in case of any questions, please feel free to email or send the messages from the portal we have.
See you next week.